I have two hip replacements and a triple back fusion and I spent the first day taking more pain pills than I normally do and went home that night and wondered why I spent my first day at a healing conference in so much pain and came the next morning and confronted David and said what can I do because I couldn't sit through another day and David gave me a progress wheel, a green progress wheel and a flame and said try this out for Sunday and much to my amazement I spent Sunday in absolutely zero pain and was hooked from that day forward. I didn't immediately get off my pain pills but from that day on I started reducing my narcotics and narcotics is what I was on. I was on four a day and they were prescribed by a pain clinic. I had been on narcotics for 30 years, non-addictive narcotics, which I know sounds like an oxymoron, but it's not. And I am off them, not totally, I do take one occasionally, but I am no longer on four a day or even for a week or even for a month. So I'm just totally amazed by it. A little bit every day. Um, we haven't had one fight for the last maybe two years, ever since I started using Biogenesis. And that is very good because uh, we would have fights every single day. And if by any chance there's a problem, like I get upset with him or, or my Latin temper comes out, and then he says, no, 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 it's okay, it's okay, you're right. And I'm like, okay, the tools work. And my brother, um, Lincoln, and some of his friends and my boys, we went bowling. And uh, my brother Lincoln's gay, and bowling's not really his thing, but right out of the chute, first throw down the alley, he went too far and flew up in the air and landed all of his weight on his left shoulder, which broke the head of his, fem his humerus bone. And we, um, he was immediately starting to go pasty white. His eyes, pupils just dilated hugely. He was feeling sick. And we, um, I had a bottle of Wings water with me. And I made him drink some. He didn't want anything. He didn't want anything. He thought he was going to throw up. And I said, please, you know, you have to drink this. Grabbed the back of his head. Made him drink it. He did. He immediately, his face got the color back in it. He, um, his eyes went back to normal, but he still had a lot of pain. Um, we took him to the doctor, then they found out um, they were probably going to have to call in a specialist, a surgeon, because he had fractured the head of his humerus, which is the ball up in the shoulder. Um, when he came home after being with the doctor, they said they were probably going to have to um, do surgery, for sure probably pin the, the knuckle part of his shoulder joint on the humerus, the upper arm. And I broke out some of the wheels and the flame and um, had the bio-oscillator there, um, did it all, just the bio-oscillator and had the intention set with the translator and the amplifier and got some funny looks, you know, amongst the people that were sitting around, but I just basically started doing them with the flame. When he went back to the doctor on Monday, the specialist, um, they took some more x-rays because these did not look like the same guy's shoulder. They, um, which was probably going to need pins or major surgery. Now they just said they he wasn't even going to need pins. That um, they had, they weren't even sure. They double checked a couple times, make sure this was the same shoulder because this, they could hardly even see the fracture in his arm. Now so. my relationship with my daughter is very ecstatic. It's just, it's been a total miracle in my life that this has happened. That I, uh, instead of being in this very unhappy situation, have such a beautiful relationship with her, and it's also. Uh, been a tremendous change with my husband because this has been a very tempestuous many years that we've been together a very uh, joyful relationship and a very um, difficult relationship and uh, just very very unstable kind of situation and I noticed that when I treat their pictures it is a night and day difference and I just could not begin to, I have just scratched the surface of w what this means in my life to be able to have harmony rather than what I was experiencing and I'm just very grateful. I also was very depressed 
and to the point where I had had nine electroshock treatments that hadn't worked. I was on Zoloft and Wellbutrin. I was told I would never, ever get off them. I had been sent away for six weeks for treatment, and I was sleeping 12 hours a day. I was reading a book a day, and that was virtually my life. I am now off of all of my antidepressants. My doctor is very, very happy about all that. And I can't even read a book. I can't sit still long enough to read a book because my life is too, ha too, too busy. I'm out taking pictures. I'm going to go back to school full time. And I just have too much energy. So I'm just very, very happy with Biogenesis, very, very happy with my crystals. And it's just given me a whole new lease on life. Okay. One more story. Okay, after this happened, it's easy. I have to say, once you get the tools and once you have experiences like this, it's good to have a group. I keep coming back to the seminars. Good to have a group because you kind of think, did this really happen? Did this, or was this coincidental? You kind of think that way. So, I like proof. I like proof. I ask for signs a lot. I get them. So my daughter invited me to come see her skateboard, which in itself is a miracle because I'm her mom, she's 15, Why it, it's not typical. So I was delighted and I went to see her skateboard across the street from where we live. I've skateboarded as a kid, so I thought, no problem, I'll borrow her skateboard. And she goes, Mom, be careful. And this girl is highly athletic, never lets anything bother her, rarely gets hurt, and when she does, she doesn't pay any attention to it. She's an extraordinary kid. So I have to live up to that. I got on the skateboard. It took off way faster than I knew it was going to. It, it just, I wanted to jump off, and instead I did this jump up in the air and landed the hardest landing I have ever landed anywhere on concrete. I fell right on my butt and my wrist. Knowing that she's such a good sport about things, I didn't want to alert her, but I had to get into the car right away and head home. I got home, the blood in my hand, it wasn't cut, but it was starting to form huge black and blue. Black and blue on me lasts eight weeks minimum. I mean, it just does not go away. And I saw my hand just get really big. I don't really remember what I reached for, but I raced upstairs to get one of the tools. I either got the flame or I got the wand. Didn't matter. I was in shock. My whole body was jarred. I started doing whatever I was doing on my wrist. The vein in my wrist, I've never seen anything like this before became like a character in a cartoon. My skin was not cut, but it reached out to the tool like this cartoon character. And I'm watching it and I'm pretty much in shock as this thing reaches out to whatever the tool was, doesn't touch it or anything, just kind of reaches out, like bulges out of my wrist. I'm going, oh no. And then it went back in, all the black and blue, the blood went up to my hand and completely disappeared completely disappeared. <laughs> I went, okay, 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 I get it. This works. This really works. It's not coincidence. It really works. Welcome back. The Wand of Genesis redirects currents of energy. Now, for the first several months that we had this tool, that's all we knew about it. So I would give lectures. I would tell people the Wand of Genesis redirects currents of energy, and then I'd move on to the next tool and people would raise their hands and invariably ask, what does that mean? And I would have to say, I don't really know. So I told Cindy, we need to get more information on the wand. Can you ask Lantos what he meant when he said that it redirects currents of energy? This is in your handouts. Lantos said about the wand of Genesis, all that is guided by the currents of energy, the principle of motion, all such activities will be strengthened. Let us take the principle of wealth. Wealth arises out of the flow of energy currents moving through the physical plane. Let these currents be directed towards the home, towards the land. 
We remove the obstacles, we remove the detours. Your home, your land, will either serve to support the accumulation of wealth, or it will offer resistance to this mighty and dynamic sepulcher of life. We must set the conditions for support. All areas of life must receive support. This is our desire for you. Now, take this wand and place it inside or outside wherever there is a void. If it is outside, put it in the earth. Do not let it be exposed. If it is inside, keep it hidden from view. You will see greatest results when the wand is placed into a void of energy, the spot where the streams of energy avoid. Walk around the house. You will notice these points of vacancy. So then we had new information on the wand and still no idea how to use it. So now I would <clears throat> give lectures and tell people about the wand and read that paragraph and people would raise their hands and say, what does that mean? And again, I would say, I don't really know. Well, I was giving a lecture down in Florida and a woman came up to me afterwards. It was Sunday evening. She introduced herself. She said that she had a bookstore in town and they needed something to increase sales revenues immediately because they were about to go out of business. What would I recommend? She asked. I said, well, put a pyramid up in the store and take a wand and put it in your cash register drawer. I didn't really know if it would work, but I knew there was certainly a void in the cash register drawer. There was no money. So she took a pyramid and took a wand and she went over to her bookstore that evening and set them up. The next day, Monday, she called me up Monday evening. She told me, well, I went over to my bookstore last night. I put the wand in the cash register drawer, put the pyramid up. Didn't really expect much. She explained that Monday is their slowest day of sales each week. But that day, they had had their biggest day of sales ever. And I was thinking, huh, that's interesting. Tuesday, I called up a friend of mine. She had a distribution company. She happened to have the wand and periodically she would call me up to say, how am I supposed to use this thing? And I would keep saying, I don't know. So I called her up on Tuesday and said, hey, we've got a story with the wand. And I told her about this experience. Three days later on Friday, she called me back she, with her story. She told me that her company uh, doesn't have problem with sales. They sell lots of stuff. They just have trouble getting paid for those sales. She explained that all of the customers are on account. They're all wholesale accounts and that a lot of them simply don't pay for their orders. They don't pay on the open invoices. And her company sends out statements each month. They send out collection letters. They try to get people to pay. They try to be nice about it, but it's very difficult getting people to pay for their orders. So she took one of her wands and she put it in her file where she kept all of her open invoices, all of the master receivables. So every debt that someone owed to her company was in this file. And she put the wand in that file, then put it back in the file cabinet. Over the next three days, so Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday morning, she didn't do any more collection efforts. They didn't make any more collection phone calls. They didn't send out any more letters. But over that three day period of time, they collected on 80% of all of their outstanding invoices. She called me and told me about that. And I was thinking, we may be onto something here. What Lantos is talking about in that paragraph that we read together. There are currents of energy naturally flowing through the physical plane. Those currents of energy provide support, support for you, support in many different activities. One of those activities is the accumulation of wealth. When there is a void of energy, all that means is that it is a roadblock, an invisible roadblock, but every bit is real to those currents of energy as a concrete roadblock is to you in your car. The wand removes that roadblock. 
it allows those currents of energy to come rushing in, providing the support they would normally have been providing all along, but for that void of energy. So this is one way that you use the wand of Genesis. You place it into a void of energy. There's another way, however, for the same purpose, accumulation of wealth, that you're able to use the wand. Because that method is removing obstructions to those currents of energy. But what happens if there isn't an obstruction? It's just that the currents of energy aren't actually strong enough. Then you use the wand this other way. It is a wand prosperity technique. What Lato said you do is you take the wand, hold it with both hands, close your eyes, sit quietly, and visualize the flowing currents of energy and light responsible for the accumulation of wealth and prosperity. Visualize these flowing currents of energy and light all around you. Do this for a minute or two each night before bed. This is something that will accumulate over time. It will strengthen the support that you get from those currents of energy that help to provide prosperity in your life. So these are two different ways of using the wand of Genesis, both for prosperity, removing the voids and strengthening the currents of energy themselves. But that's just using the wand for prosperity. There are many other ways in which to use the wand of Genesis. One is for emotions, emotional traumas in specific. When someone has had an emotionally traumatic experience, what you do is you have them hold the wand with both hands over their heart. We've had this experience many different times. Early on, it started with someone who was at a class who discovered that a family member had been killed in a motorcycle accident. And she was, of course, distraught. And someone thought, you know what? The wand is good at filling voids. She has a void in her heart. Let's have her hold the wand over her heart. So I thought, well, it sounds good enough to me. We gave the woman the wand, had her hold it over her heart. She held it there for about 15 minutes and she felt much better afterwards. She said that the feeling of shock, the feeling of loss, the feeling of grief, all of that had been replaced with simply a feeling of tremendous love for the family member who had just died. So I was thinking, well, that's an interesting, an interesting experience for us. About half a year later, we got a call from someone out in California who asked if we had anything that would help with emotional traumas. And I said, try the wand. Told her to hold it with both hands over her heart. And she did, and she called us back a week later to tell us her experience. She explained that she had had a severe emotional trauma 10 years earlier, and that every single night she would end up crying herself to sleep. When she got the wand that night, she held it with both hands over her heart. She didn't cry herself to sleep, but she simply was very peaceful. She put the wand aside. She held it for 10, 15 minutes. She put it back on the nightstand and she went to sleep. The next evening, she didn't even bother holding the wand. She forgot about it. And she went to sleep without crying herself to sleep. She did that each night for the next few days and realized she just didn't have that feeling of trauma anymore. She thought back to the event that had happened and she said she could clearly remember it, but she couldn't remember the grief, the trauma that she felt from it. So the wand is beneficial at helping to address emotional traumas. Physically, there are several different physical effects that the wand will have for an individual, several benefits on physical conditions, one of which is breast cancer. The instructions for breast cancer that Lantos gave included brushing around the affected area with the wand for longer periods of time. I was giving a lecture in Colorado and there were 
a couple of women there, they were sisters, one was 72, one was 74. They came up to me afterwards, the 74 year old explained that she had terminal breast cancer. She had undergone chemotherapy, it was not successful, her doctor said that her case was terminal. So she and her sister were wondering if I could teach them how to do a treatment session specifically for the sister with the cancer. I said, sure. I went over to their house the next day. I taught them how to use the tools and I showed them how to specifically brush with the wand around the affected area for longer periods of time during the treatment session. And then I didn't hear back from them. Fully a year later, I gave another seminar in their area and the 74 year old woman with the breast cancer showed up and I was thrilled. I was thinking, wow, she's here. She was sitting at a desk at, a, at one of the tables that we had set up for the event. I walked in, I saw her, I walked right up to her and said, Carolyn, how are you doing? And she said, oh, I'm fine. And I looked at her and I said, and the cancer? And she said, oh, it's gone. And I looked at her and I said, and you've been checked out. Your doctor has said it's completely gone. And she said, yes, I'm completely fine. It was as if she had gotten over a cold. It was so simple for her. The wand is effective. Brush around the area when you are dealing with breast cancer. Another physical condition where the wand is effective, asthma. When someone has asthma, brush around, especially the head and the chest area, but go all over the body, brushing around with the wand. Do this for five, 10 minutes during the treatment session, and it will help with asthma. HIV, this is another area where the wand is going to be effective. Here are the instructions that Lantos gave were to brush around the whole body with the wand, going all over the body for much longer periods of time during a treatment session, and do it periodically through the treatment session. So if you've got an hour-long treatment session, use the wand for five or 10 minutes, then one of the other tools, then the wand for another five or 10 minutes, then another tool, then the wand for another five or 10 minutes, then another tool, and then finish up with the wand for another five or 10 minutes. So it becomes the principal tool that's used for an individual who has HIV. Another area where the wand is beneficial with physical conditions, heart attacks. We have a lot of experiences with heart attacks. If someone is having a heart attack and they are able to hold the wand, have them hold it with both hands over their heart. Do this until the feeling of the heart attack goes away. We have a lot of experiences, as I said, and they've all gone away within five minutes. Now, you always want to go ahead and call for emergency services to come, for paramedics, for fire department to come and help out just in case. But in each of our experiences, the person was completely recovered, feeling just fine by the time paramedics arrived. I was uh, giving a lecture. There was a woman there who raised her hand and she said she actually was having a heart attack right then. She laid down on a table. She was in, she had tremendous pain in her chest. We called 911 to get paramedics over there immediately. I grabbed the wand, had her hold the wand with both hands over her heart. The paramedics were there quickly. It was within about five minutes that they arrived, but not quickly enough to try to help her because within three or four minutes, she was sitting back up and feeling fine. By the time they arrived, she was walking around without any problems at all. I had a friend of mine who was I've, talking on the phone. It was late at night, he was in bed, and all of a sudden he felt a vice on his chest. Just like they say, one of the symptoms of a heart attack, that feeling of your chest being in a vice. He, he immediately hung up the phone, he could barely move, he had a wand on his nightstand, and he was able to reach over and grab the wand. He couldn't actually move his body, but he was with his arm able to grab the wand, and he took it and he held it with both hands over his heart 
It was about five minutes. The feeling went away. Everything was back to normal for him. He knew it was a heart attack because he had had a heart attack a few weeks earlier. He had heart disease. He was on medication, but he knew that the doctor had said that there was a risk for a significant heart attack in the near future, and then this happened. So for heart attacks, it's simple. Hold with both hands over the heart uh, until the feeling passes. Now, if the person is just not able to hold it, you will hold it over the person's heart. Don't just let it sit there. Hold with both hands over the heart. Another area, physical, where the wand is going to be very beneficial is pregnancy. When a woman is pregnant, every morning when she wakes up, take the wand, brush around the womb with the wand. This will help to nourish the baby. We had a couple in Oakland who came to a seminar of mine. And this couple had been trying to get pregnant for some time. They were on medications. They were doing everything to get pregnant. They weren't able to get pregnant. Uh, the woman was in her upper 30s. The man was in his early 40s. They came to the lecture. They found out that Lantos recommended one of the aqua blue wheels and the multicolored pyramid if someone is trying to get pregnant. So they got those two tools. And a week later, they called us up and said that she was pregnant. She, uh, they had been trying and success. She finally got pregnant. So then they were wanting to order a wand because they saw that Lantos recommended brushing around the womb if a woman is pregnant. Now, this woman had been able to get pregnant before. It's just she was never able to carry to term. She always miscarried. So they wanted to see, you know, do everything they could to help her make it all the way through term. So she, we sent out the wand and gave her the instructions. Every morning she brushed around the womb with the wand. Nine months later, she gave birth to a completely healthy baby girl. She called us up and told us that her ob actually told her, her doctor told her that hers was a perfect pregnancy. She didn't have any difficulties, no issues, no problems arose at all during the entire pregnancy. If a woman's pregnant, use the wand, brush around the womb every morning for a few minutes. Another area where the wand is going to be beneficial is mental illness. When someone has a mental illness, and this is pretty broadly effective, so whether it is autism, whether it is Down syndrome, number of different mental illnesses, just have the person, depending upon their, their level of capability, one thing that you can always do, place the wand under the bed of the individual for when they're sleeping. Then during the daytime, brush around the person's head. You can go over the whole body, but you especially want to brush around the individual's head with the wand. Do this for longer periods of time, 5, 10, 15 minutes. Then, if the individual is capable of doing this, you will have them hold the wand with both hands. Sit quietly holding the wand with both hands for a few minutes at a time, several times during the course of the day. These are the instructions for mental illness. We had a doctor down in Atlanta who specialized in autistic children. And she told us that her, her clientele was extremely conservative and religious. So they would not be receptive to doing treatments with the biogenesis tools. But they did trust her, so she decided to try this out. She selected a few of her patients, the young children who had autism, who, were, who had the most severe of symptoms. They were the ones that were violent. They were the ones that would kick and hit and throw things and scream. And she got a few wands and she gave one wand to each set of the parents. She gave them the instruction. She said, we're just trying this out. Don't even worry about it. She didn't tell them where it was from, the energy, or anything. She just gave them the wand and said, place it under the child's bed. 
for each of these children, the results were the same. Within the first two weeks, the most severe symptoms started to dissipate. The violence started to go away. The screaming, the throwing, the kicking started to go away. They were still autistic, but their symptoms were getting better. Over the course of several weeks, those symptoms all disappeared. And again, the child was still autistic. It's just the symptoms were much better. You will need to use the wand for a long period of time for someone who has mental illness in most cases. There is one exception to this. If you find out that the individual has mental illness and that individual hasn't yet been born. We had a woman who called us up and she told us that her daughter, it was actually her granddaughter, was pregnant and she had gone in for a regular check checkup at her obstetrician at her doctor's office and they did some testing and the doctor informed her that uh, they needed to do some further testing because it looked like her child was going to be born with Down syndrome. So they've got a preliminary test that'll determine it, then they do a follow-up test to determine the severity of Down syndrome for that child. So she, of course, the granddaughter, was devastated, learning that her first child was going to have Down syndrome, and she and her husband needed to decide what to do. The grandmother called us and we told her, use the wand. So she ended up coming over. She asked the granddaughter if she would like a treatment. The granddaughter said, okay. And the grandmother gave her a treatment with all the tools, but especially with the wand, using it over the womb. And she did that for 20 minutes. A couple days later, the granddaughter went into her doctor for the follow-up testing. The doctor did the follow-up test and then notified her that actually it must have turned out that the first test was wrong because it showed no sign of Down syndrome at all with the baby. We've had this happen three times where the baby was diagnosed with Down syndrome. Then the person had just one treatment, especially with the wand, specifically over the womb, and then follow-up testing to confirm and determine the severity of the Down syndrome showed no sign of Down syndrome. So it would appear that with, uh, with babies who haven't been born yet, that the wand works very quickly in this particular area. This is the wand of Genesis. It redirects currents of energy. It sounds very simple, and it is very simple, but it's very important and effective across a broad range of applications in your life, from general issues such as prosperity, to physical diseases, emotional conditions, mental illnesses. The wand is very effective. The BioTranslator is a tool that translates your desires. It translates your desires into a sequence code that is more readily received and acted upon by forces in creation that are actually able to act on those desires. So it's a tool that allows you to contact, to call into action forces in creation that are able to assist you with specific desires. How do you use it? You simply hold it. Hold it and focus on your desire. You can use affirmation, you can use prayer, you can simply focus on what your desire is. Now, it's an easy tool to use. Hold it, focus on your desire. But you can also write down your desire and place the biotranslator on the written piece of paper. This is also very beneficial. There's another tool that you can use with the biotranslator. This tool is the bioamplifier. Bioamplifier, just put it in front of the biotranslator and continue to use the translator in the same way. The bioamplifier amplifies that influence coming out of the biotranslator, making it stronger. When you write down your desire, 
put the biotranslator and the bioamplifier on the written desire. So the bioamplifier amplifies other tools. Place it in front of the biotranslator when you use the biotranslator. If you have a pyramid and it's to cover a larger area, like a large room or a whole house, go ahead and place a bioamplifier in front of it. It amplifies the signal coming out from the pyramid. The bioamplifier also, however, is a tool that can be used directly on the body. In a treatment session, simply hold it so that the base of the bioamplifier is a few inches, several centimeters away from the body, then move it in a circular motion or a side-to-side -side motion. Go all around the person's body with this tool. This helps to remove toxins from the individual's body. I was giving a, a lecture back in 1999 down in Florida. We were doing very short sessions, five-minute sessions. There is a woman seated in a chair. I had the bioamplifier. It's the only tool I used on her. I went ahead and went all over her body with the bioamplifier for five minutes. And that was it. The next morning, she called me up. I was staying at a hotel there. I answered the phone. She said, Dave, my urine turned orange. And I was trying to figure out who this woman was and how much trouble I might be in right now. And so I simply asked her, well, is this a good thing? And she said, yes. And then she explained who she was, that I met her the night before, that I used the bioamplifier on her for five minutes and that she's undergoing chemotherapy. She explained that she's undergoing chemotherapy for cancer and one of the chemicals that she receives on a three-week rotation is a particularly toxic reddish-orange chemical. And her doctor, her oncologist, told her that when she goes in for chemotherapy and she receives this particular medicine, that her urine will turn orange and it needs to because it shows that this chemical is being removed from her body. It's highly toxic, so it's supposed to be in there for a period of time, but then be removed from her body. She said that every time she goes in for chemotherapy, her urine turns orange for two to three days, then goes back to normal. Well, that night that I had seen her, it had been 10 days since her last chemotherapy. She had gone in for chemotherapy, her urine had turned orange for three days, then it went back to normal for another seven days, then we did this session, and the next morning her urine was orange again, showing more of that toxin being removed from her body that her body had lost the ability to remove on its own. I was telling this story at different classes, different lectures, and then got a call from a psychologist in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. She called us up at the office to tell us, I am so glad that David shared that orange urine experience at the class. She had gone to a, a class in Miami about a month earlier. I had shared this story. She ordered a kit. She was starting to do treatment sessions on her clients. There is a woman who came in, a new client who came in for a session. The psychologist gave her a treatment session, <clears throat> and then the woman went home. And the next day, the woman called her up, frantic. The doctor answered the phone, and the woman said who she was, that he had gone, she had gone in the day before for a treatment session. And then she said, my urine is pitch black. And the doctor, the psychologist, just froze. She said she didn't know what to think, what to say, what to do. She was scared to death that she had done something horrible. And then she remembered the orange urine experience from the class. So she said, oh, and she explained that story. She told that story to the woman. She didn't know if it would be relevant, but she thought, well, it's something where, you know, the urine changed color after a treatment. She told the woman the story and the woman said, oh, well, that would make sense. And then she explained why she came in for the treatment session. She had come in without telling the psychologist about this. She had come in because she had tried to kill herself using her car 
for carbon monoxide poisoning. She didn't die. She didn't succeed in committing suicide, but that had been a week or two earlier, and she was now trying to eliminate the effects of the carbon monoxide within her body. She called her back. Well, she went back in for another treatment session a week later, and a, week, a day after that, she called the doctor back, and she said, well, it's not pitch black anymore. It's just gray this time. But again, her urine changed colors uh, as more of this toxin was being removed from her body. The bioamplifier is also used for burns. If someone gets a burn, go ahead and use the bio oscillator over the affected area. It had a chef who was the head chef at a restaurant in Washington, D.C. And she had come to a class there. She got a kit. Uh, she called us up a few months later to let us know that she had gotten burned at work, and this was nothing new. She was getting something out of an oven. She was careless, and she uh, touched the coils across the back of her hand. She had done this before a few other times previously in the previous five, ten years. She knew what to expect. With this kind of burn, she knew it was going to hurt, for two weeks, then the pain would go away, but the scar would remain for a couple of months, and then it would start to fade. Well, she happened to have the tools with her when she got this burn, so she got the bioamplifier, she sat down, she took a break, and she used the bioamplifier over the burn on her hand. She said she did it for about five to 10 minutes, and the pain went away. And she was thinking, wow, that worked really quickly. So she put the bioamplifier away and she went back to work. A couple hours later, the pain started coming back. And she's thinking, oh, I was hoping that was gone. But she took another break and she grabbed the bioamplifier and she used it again over her hand for another five to 10 minutes and the pain went away again. So she put it away and she went on to work. And another two, three hours later, the pain started to come back. So then she grabbed the bioamplifier, did it for another five to 10 minutes and the pain went away and she put the bioamplifier away and she went back to work. She said she did it four or five times on that day. Each time that she did it, the pain went away within five to ten minutes. Then the pain was gone until a few hours later when, when, when it would start up again. The next morning she woke up, she said she didn't have any pain, so she didn't use the bioamplifier. But there was no pain throughout that whole day or the next day or the next. The pain was simply gone. She then said that about two weeks later, the scar was completely gone as well. So she only used the bioamplifier five to ten minutes each time, four or five times spread out during the first day. She had very little pain during that first day, and that was it. No more pain for the rest of the time. And instead of taking a couple of months for the scar to start to fade, it took a couple of weeks. So use the bioamplifier for a burn. If someone is a burn victim, like they were in a fire that burns all over their body, you will still use the bioamplifier, but you'll want to use it for much longer periods of time, half an hour, an hour, every single day going all over the person's body. That's the bioamplifier. The Genesis pendant is a simple tool. It's a heart-shaped pendant. You wear it or have it in a pocket, and it sends out a beacon signal saying, come enjoy the light of Genesis. So what does this mean? It means that it opens a person up to the light. Now, all of us know at least one person in our lives who happens to be completely closed off to the light. This tool helps to open them up, open their heart to the light. But you're probably sitting there thinking, you know what, this person's already closed to the light. How am I supposed to get them to wear this tool? It actually works not only on the person who's wearing it, but on everyone around them, just like a beacon. So you can wear it, and it will still have this influence on your family members who are around you, your friends, your coworkers, it's a simple tool that helps to get someone open, open them up to the light. That's the Genesis pendant. The eight-sided pyramid 
is very similar in purpose to the multicolored biogenesis pyramid. Both pyramids restore harmony. Both pyramids remove negativity from the environment. However, when you are going to be placing the pyramid in a room of greater silence, whether it's a meditation room, whether it's a bedroom, then you will want to use the eight-sided pyramid because the eight-sided pyramid also enlivens finer layers of creation. So layers of creation that, are, that you want enlivened when you are in those areas of silence. Then you use the eight-sided pyramid. So if you're trying to figure out I have a multicolored pyramid, I have an eight-sided pyramid, where do I put them? Put the multicolored pyramid in the family room of your house. Put it in an area of activity in the kitchen. The eight-sided pyramid, go ahead and put it in the bedroom in an area of greater silence. The shield of Genesis. The shield of Genesis. There are two different sizes. There's a large shield and there is a small shield. They do the same thing. They help to provide protection for the individual, protection against negativity and disease. Now, this is not all forms of negativity and not all types of disease, but many forms of negativity, many types of disease. It's just like armor that you put on that helps to pro provide a layer of insulation against negativity and against disease. The large shield of Genesis is going to be used by most people. However, the small shield of Genesis is used by younger children, children who are young enough that they're not yet driving a car, that they haven't taken on greater responsibilities uh, associated with adulthood. Uh, it's also used for elderly people who no, no longer really go out into the world. They would be people who would be, for example, in a nursing home environment or who stay home most of the time. Those people can use the smaller shield. For the rest of us, use the large shield. Either wear it or have it in a pocket, keep it with you on your person throughout the day, put it under your pillow at night. This helps to provide this layer of protection. Yet, a lot of people who have told us that they frequently would get sick, colds, flu, whatever, but they would go ahead and start wearing the shield of Genesis and notice that they stopped getting sick as frequently. We had one person who told us that whenever she was around family members who were sick, she would always get whatever they had. Whether it was a cold, whether it was the flu, she always got sick. And she had a large family growing up, so that meant she was getting sick a lot growing up. She took a vacation with two family members, and they were in a rental house. It was a small house on the beach, and both of the family members came down with the flu. And this woman was thinking, great, now I'm going to get the flu, and that's going to be my vacation. She had the shield with her. She kept it with her all day long. She slept with it on at night. She said that was the first time in her life that she didn't get sick when someone around her was sick. So it helps to provide protection. Also, have a woman who has breast cancer wearing the shield. Make sure that she will be wearing the shield. So I spoke about using the wand for breast cancer. Another thing the person wants to do is be sure to wear the shield at all times if they have breast cancer. Negativity. Now, there may be any form, many forms of negativity, but one area where we seem to get a lot of experiences with the shield is car accidents. We have a lot of experiences with car accidents. Many cases where the car accident was avoided, sometimes in fairly remarkable ways. We had a woman who came to a class in Los Angeles, but she was from India, and she got the kit, she went home to India, her family was well off. They had a chauffeur and limousine there. And she said that she and her family were in the car. Uh, the chauffeur was driving. They were going along a road at highway speeds, uh, even though it was pretty foggy. She said there was dense fog, but they were still going 50 to 60 miles an hour. And all of a sudden, there was a truck right in front of them, coming straight at them because of the fog. She really, you know, you couldn't see it until it was right in front of them. The chauffeur was so surprised 
and so convinced there was no way to avoid an accident that he didn't try to stop the car and he didn't try to steer away out of the path. He simply took his hands off the steering wheel. Immediately, the steering wheel spun violently to the right, sending the car down an embankment that because of the fog, the driver couldn't see that there was this embankment at this point and that it was a gentle enough slope that the car was able to make it down this slope without anyone in the car being injured. The car came to a complete standstill. No one in the car was injured. And this woman called us and told us that even with that violent of a maneuver, she still couldn't believe that they didn't hit the truck because they were so close to the truck by the time they were able to see it. But not all car accidents uh, are going to be avoided. This helps to provide protection from harm. So sometimes it will mean that the car accident is avoided, sometimes it won't be, but in the event that it isn't avoided, it still helps to provide protection for the individual, which is why you want to be wearing it or have it in your pocket. I had a woman who came to one of the classes, she learned about biogenesis, she got a kid, she was wearing her shield, and a couple months later, she started having the, uh, the thought that she really needed to get her daughter a shield. Her daughter was 16 years old. She was just starting to drive a car. And the mother was thinking, I should get her a shield. And every couple of days, she started having this thought, she needs to get a shield. So after a few times of thinking this, she called us up and she ordered a shield for her daughter. She hung up the phone, having ordered the shield, and her very first thought was, it's not going to get here in time. So that evening, her daughter came home and the woman gave her daughter her shield. She said, here, I ordered one of these for you, but I want you to have this until yours comes in. Just keep it with you, wear it or put it in a pocket all the time. So her daughter did. And the next day, her daughter was in a car accident. It was a severe car accident, bad enough that it took firefighters over an hour to get her out of her car. They had to cut away a large amount of the car just to be able to get her out of it. She told her mother afterwards that it was like there was a little cocoon around where she sat because where she sat was the only part of the car that wasn't destroyed in the accident. She was mostly uninjured. She had a scrape on one of her toes, but that was the extent of her injuries. She was the only person in the car. No one else was injured. The Shield of Genesis is a simple tool. Wear it, put it in your pocket. It helps to provide protection against negativity, protection against disease. Another thing to know about the Shield of Genesis is a simple technique that you should be doing every day that helps to strengthen the amount of protection that you get from the shield. It involves the use of the Flame of Genesis and the shield. It is the shield and flame technique for protection. Every person every day should be doing this. It takes less than a minute to do for each individual and it is very simple. But Lanto said this is true protection learn this well. What you do is you take the shield of Genesis, you hold it a couple of inches above your head. Take the flame, direct it through the shield toward your head, slowly move down the front of your body with the flame directed through the shield toward your body. You can use a circular motion of the flame if you want, or you can just have it moving still with the shield. Go all the way down until you touch the ground. Then start back up at the top of your body, shield a couple inches above your head, flame above the shield, directed through the shield toward your head. Now go down the right side of your body with the shield staying a couple of inches away from your body, the flame directed through the shield toward your body. Go all the way down until you touch the ground with the shield again. Then start back up at the top of your body, the shield a couple of inches above your head, the flame directed through the shield toward your head. Go down the left side of your body, all the way in the, in, down until you touch the ground. Then you take the shield and the flame, you go down the back side of the body, 
all the way down until you touch the ground. Now, if you're doing this on somebody else, it's very easy to do that. You just go down the back side of their body. But if you're doing this on yourself, how do you actually do this? Because it's, it's a bit of a challenge to do this on yourself. And I asked Cindy about this because I travel quite a bit at the time. And I told her that it was a little bit embarrassing to ask a hotel valet to go ahead and try and do this on me if I'm staying at a hotel. So is there a way for me to be able to do this on myself? Cindy asked Lantos and he said, yes. You do the front side, the right side, the left side, then you take the shield, hold it a couple inches above your head with the flame through the shield towards the head, say the word back, and then you continue to go down the front of the body all the way until you touch the ground. So it's a simple technique. You Keep the shield just a few inches away from the body the whole time, starting at the top of the body, and have the flame directed through the shield towards the body. Go down the front side, then start up at the top. Go down the right side, start up at the top. Go down the left side, go back up to the top, say the word back, and then go down the front side of your body again. But of course, if you're doing this on someone else, you don't have to say the word back. You simply go down their back side all the way until you touch the ground with the shield. That is going to take only five, 10 seconds per side. It takes less than a minute to do this each day. You just do it once each day, but it's very important, very beneficial at strengthening that level of protection offered by the shield of Genesis. The Wings of Genesis. The Wings of Genesis is a unique tool for biogenesis because unlike the other tools that you wear or you use directly over the body, this tool is not directly used on the body. Instead, you put it in water. You let it sit in a glass of water overnight or throughout the day, and then you drink the water. This is to help address the misdirected growth of cells and addictions. With the misdirected growth of cells, we have a lot of experiences with diseases such as cancer. Drinking the water for that is going to be very beneficial. But in addition to that, we also have experiences with people who used it for other types of misdirected growth of cells, such as adult acne or age spotting. Here, what people have done is they put the wings of Genesis in a container of water, let it sit overnight, then they will take the container of water, put it in a spray bottle, fill a spray bottle with the water, and then spray it directly on their skin. We had a woman who came to a class, and she had been to a lecture, then she came to another lecture half a year later. She stood up in front of the class when I was talking about the wings, and she told the class that she had severe age spotting on her arms. I had no idea where she was going with this. I hadn't heard anything about this, but she said to the class that she started thinking she would use the wings on it. So she, every single morning, she sprayed up and down her left arm with the wings water, but she didn't spray on her right arm because she wanted to see if it actually made a difference. She figured if it disappeared on the left arm and not on the right arm, she would know it was the wings water and she would know it's what had the effect. She did this every day for a month. She said in the morning time when she would wake up, she would spray the left arm several times because she wouldn't be dressed for the first half hour or so that she was awake. As, you know, Before she showered, after she showered, as she was getting ready, she would spray over, over and over on her left arm. After a month, she decided to really take a look and see. She told the class what she did. She rolled up her sleeves, the sleeves of her shirt, so that the whole class could see. All of the spotting was gone on the left arm. All of the spotting remained on the right arm. A month later, I gave a lecture in California, outside of Los Angeles. And a woman came up to me at that class. She introduced herself. She told me she had been at the lecture a month earlier where that woman had rolled up her sleeves. And this woman said that she also had a problem with age spotting, but it was on the backs of her hands. She had tried everything. She even tried surgery, it, uh, laser surgery, but she said it was painful and it didn't really work. 
So she decided to start using the wings water the way this woman had done it. She said that over half of the spots had disappeared during that 30 day period of time that she was spraying with the wings water. Misdirected growth of cells. Use the wings water. With addictions, this is another area where the wings water is going to be helpful, where it's going to be beneficial. When someone has an addiction, go ahead and have them drink the wings water. This is something that you're going to see over the, a longer period of time, over the course of a month, two, three, four months. That's where you look to see a difference for someone who has an addiction. There's another way of using the wings. When you are facing a lot of difficulties or challenges with something, Lanto said, take the wings of Genesis and place it on a photograph. It could be a photograph of a business, photograph of a house, photograph of a person, photograph of an activity. Place it on a photograph representing that problem area in your life. Or put it on a map. Or put it on a written document, like a contract that's giving you difficulties. The wings helps to resolve difficulties, differences in one's life. So that's the wings of Genesis. That is the wings of Genesis. Let's go ahead and take another short break. Pause the video playback, take a break, and start up when you're ready to.